Hi, it's me again with Corel Roll Tips and Tricks. Somebody sent me this logo, and it is pretty bad. It's pretty fuzzy. And also, this is the original logo. Even though the logo is small, look how big the bounty box is. So, like a lot of videos, I will go to the crop tool and crop out everything I don't need. Now, it doesn't really matter in this case what color you change it or whatever. So I've got the other ones perfect, same one, I think. But here I've kind of done it. Uh, I need to change the other parts to black. Um, but it's pretty close and it's got an outline around it. Now this particular logo has a blank space and then a red line, but he, I, he did say he was gonna engrave it. And it's got some gray shadowing, shadow marks. And if you need that help, I can we can do that later. So all I did was take the logo and trace it. Outline trace, clip art. And I moved it over. Now the text is terrible. The text is basically unusable. But in this part, you can't even read the establishment. But what we're gonna do, let's move mine out of the way for a second. We are going to go and we're going to go to object order or group and ungroup it. And then we're going to take this circle and move it out of the way. We kind of need it in a minute. I can go ahead and left click, right click, and I can actually get rid of that wordage with the virtual segment delete key and just delete that word. Whoop, it was really, I'm either hit it or it's connected, but I hit it. So that's the shape of our, I guess it's a beaver. I'm gonna go ahead and nudge it up. And then I'm gonna take and try to nudge all this over. And you can see it was actually white, had a white background. I'm not gonna worry about the red because the red was just a line between the spaces. And I'm just gonna, now I'm just gonna do the blues and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna go ahead and do it all, the grays. And he can, whoever I'm helping can decide later. Now I can get rid of that wordage. <clears throat> and that doesn't look too bad. And, and we could, I think engraving, unless you're gonna, if you're just doing one of them, I don't, I don't think you're gonna wanna leave that gray. Uh, if you're just doing one, I could show him how to do that. Um, well, let's just kinda, well, we need that. We don't need that. We don't need that. That was part of the gray. And the beaver looks a little, maybe that tooth. Well, that looks like mine. Um, yeah, it's just, you could clean that tooth up a little bit by, I'm just gonna delete it. And it actually, well, maybe I hit black. Um, it's actually white in the picture. So now we can take all this and I'm gonna safely go left click, right click. And I'm gonna make that a hairline so we can work with it a little better. And I just did a video on the same thing, getting rid of interior lines. Now we've got three whoop de doos what I call. So we're gonna go on that one, we're gonna grab the shape tool and we're gonna select both these, and you can get rid of that whoop de doo but by the time you figure out what you're doing, um, you might be messed up. So instead of doing that, what I suggest to do, is take both those and right click and turn them into a line. Now we can always change that if that needs to be a sharp object or another line like that. Uh, there was another whoop de doo That looks a little funny right there, but evidently it's not. There's a couple more whoop de doos right? What I call whoop de doos Select both the ends of the whoop de doo and right click and turn them into a line. To me, it's the easiest way to get rid of it. Now, in this particular case, it made another line. And we are really gonna have to look at the original to find out. Now here, you're gonna mess it up a little bit. Right click, turn them into a line. See, that's that may be what the problem is. And maybe where the whoop-de-doos were going. Um, 
I think there's one more little bitty one. Now let's just fix that one um, by bringing this in. So there's two ways to do it. Now I need to kind of look at the beaver and see there's just those two ear parts. Um, so I'm going to take the virtual segment delete and whoop, maybe went too far. Yeah, I think that's going to be it. So and then you've got your shape of your beaver, but what I would strongly suggest, because you don't know where some of the lines are, I'm going to take the smart fill tool and fill that in with black and fill his ear in with black and fill his eye in with black and his eye. Or You see, there you kind of have it. But it still looks pretty rough. So this is a good case, left click, right click, and see this way you know all the lines are solid. Turn it back into a hairline. I'm using somebody else's file evidently, not, not the gentleman I'm helping, but I didn't close one down. And then just take your smoothing tool and just smooth this out a little bit. You know, especially um, if you've never used a smoothing tool, you'll come to really love it. Do a little bit on his ear. On, on little parts, you can almost go too fast. I mean, I'm just going to click on it. Look what it does. I'm not even hardly moving it. And, and for the one I'm doing this for, you could bring your original in and make it look a little better. Now, I'm going to take the smart fill tool. Of, you know what? We could just, yep, we could just turn it all black. Now, one of these I hope I put in the center of the page. Um, it looks like that one right there. So what I'm going to do, and that's regardless now what's going on. Um, remember I had the circle? I'm going to hit P and put it in the center of the page. Now, we don't really, I didn't really need the beaver. And I need to group them together. I didn't really need the beaver. I needed the circle for size. So I'm going to see if I can't. I'm going to see if this doesn't work. I'm going to hold down the shift key and select our beaver shape and go CE. Nope, it didn't put it right where it's supposed to be according to the logo. I maybe just had the circle, but at least it's in the center of the circle. Now I can take my beaver and slightly move him up to that logo. Now, if you remember the logo had a line around it, I was afraid of that. Go up an object and break the curve apart to get rid of that line. You could actually use that line, but since we kind of recreated the logo, I just, I don't like that right in there. Um, tell you what, let's turn this back into a hairline by left clicking, right clicking. And I'm gonna move that with the shape tool. And remember I grouped it together, so I gotta ungroup it before I can do anything. It just kind of moved that node in. I wanna give him a little more room. I'm gonna get back to this smoothing tool. And for the one I'm doing this for, I'm not, um, I want you to take more time than I'm taking. I didn't really smooth it up too much. Uh, get back to our nodes and maybe, you know, you can delete, delete, and you know, you can do curves and everything, but we're gonna call that good. So I'm gonna go ahead and use Smart Fill this time. That looks pretty good. Now what I can do is actually take the shape of the beaver. I'm gonna leave it ungrouped so I can make a boundary. And there, there's our boundary. Now what I can do is take our boundary and make it, let's make it like four points and let's make it yellow for right now. I didn't need to make it yellow in the inside. I needed, I left, I left click, I needed a right click. So there's our boundary around our uh, beaver. It's a little bit too much. So let's go back to two points. And that's not bad. 
So now what I can do to, um, I can take my smart fill tool this time and fill that in and see the boundary because it's going to that object. So now I can fill in this and move it up twice, left click, right click, and that should be an outline around the, the boundary. So I'm gonna make it like two points. Now if I take the yellow boundary away and move this back, now there's not enough separation. And it's because I did it with lines. I wasn't thinking. What I can do is take this line, go up to object and convert it to an outline. Then I can left click, right click and bring it in. There's our boundary. But I've got a line behind there. So let's take this and try to cut the inside line. There are, there, and that is, as long as it's more than a hairline, it's going to engrave. That's a half point line. Now, remember I said I needed this circle? I needed this circle for size. Uh, and also, you know, if he wants to invert this and make everything white and have the circle, I think personally it would probably look better to engrave it like that. But if he needs help with that. So now we need the size of the inside circle. So I just made an inside circle. I'm going to left click, right click, break the curve apart, get rid of our, and I'm going to hit P. So there's our outside circle we need for our text. I'm going to go and delete that. Now I can't find that text or something close to that font. So I'm just going to use this right now. So you need to find a font. It's a block type letter, uh, and, but they're both the same, I believe. But we need to put this right in the middle. You can ballpark it, or you can play with math. Our outside circle is not equal because our circle wasn't equal. I want to make it equal right now, so I'm going to make it 2.5. Now, just remember that we can... Um, We've made the logo smaller so we can make it any size we want. I need to undo that and make it 2.5. Now our inner circle, well, it's not, it's not perfect either. Let's make it perfect. Let's make it 1.4. I'm making the math EV. So we got 1.4 and 2.5. Bring out our calculator, 2.5 minus 1.4 minus 3.9 divided by two. We need 0.195 smaller. Take our circle, our outside circle, make a duplicate and go up here and go in negative 0.95. Two, I think it was. I didn't have my ratio locked. Minus 0.952. I did something wrong. Let's go back to the calculator. 0.25 minus 1.4 is 0.11 divided by two. Oh, it's 0.55. So take this circle. We've still got a duplicate, I believe. Yep. Take that circle minus 0.55. And that circle is right in the middle of the other two circles. Now I would nudge it out of the way, take my text, and it's just gonna give you a more sense of the center. Take our text, go up to text, fit text to path, put it on our path, and then just move it down. And that's more in the center. See the red line up here? That means it's equal. Now let's try this. Let's tell you what I'm gonna do is make a duplicate of that in case it messes up. And I'm going to go here, I'm going to go to object and break the text apart and bring the text over. And look at that, that should be right in the middle. And when he picks his real text, uh, that should work better and then just do the same. And also you can just type in established 1951 and put it there. And this is a really good case for working in the center of the page because you can uh, type, let me just do it. And first, you need to find that text. 
if you ever get lost on your board, hit the F4 key and it'll bring up everything. So I'm going to go EST point 1951. And then you'd want that text size. And this is why I work in the center of the page. Because now I'm going to hit P and put it in the center of the page. When I hold down the control button, it's going to be right in the center of the page and right in the center of our circles and everything's right and correct. Now that, if you took a, I'm going to hold down the control button and the control button just doesn't really allow me to go too far off course. And then once you get it, you could actually change your nut factor to something low and just move it down to wherever you think. The beaver, or I hope it's a beaver, doesn't look bad. You know, I would clean it up a little bit more. Uh, do your text to path. And if you want to reverse the colors, um, let me know and we'll take a look at that uh, next time. I hope that helped a little bit and thank you for watching.